So we have a sign in our entryway that says, we are so glad you are here. But sometimes if I'm honest, I'm not so glad, but it's not because of you, it's me. It's because my house looks like this. I don't know about you, but um, there are always too many coats and jackets and things in our pockets and nowhere to put them. So I decided to solve that problem by building a hall tree. And this week, I'm going to show you how you can do the same with some old barn wood or lumber, an old bed, and some great target finds. Hopefully, it will clean up your area like it did mine. Okay, stay tuned. Welcome to the tutorial today where I'm going to show you how to create a fabulous shabby chic hall tree so that your entryway is no longer messy, it's dressy. <laughs> uh, but before we get started, I just want to welcome you to the YouTube channel for Revive Heart and Home. I'm Heidi and I will be your guide today. Before we get started, I just want to welcome you to my channel and show you around a little bit. Uh, take the chance to orient yourself. Um, we've got fabulous playlists on everything from the basics to more advanced techniques. Um, and if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe so I can continue bringing you fabulous DIY videos to create the farmhouse and shabby chic home of your dreams. Okay, without further ado, let's get going. Okay, this is a better look at my entryway. Of course, lots of clutter, which I will clean up, of course. And then I will move the remaining things over to the adjoining room while I will, will put our new shabby chic call tree and in the space right here where my office used to be. Okay, I had this old 100 year old barn door that was just screaming for me to do something with it and this old bed footboard with curved ends. First, you'll wanna disassemble the barn door or go to a salvage yard and find some barn wood already disassembled. Okay, it's time to cut your bed to size. What I figured out first was how deep I wanted the bench portion of the hall tree to be, and that was about 17 inches. And so I measured each end of the bed inwards at 17 inches, drew a line, and then took my circular saw and cut it from the bottom to the top. Then I decided how tall I wanted my hall tr tree to be, and that was eight feet in our house because we have nine foot ceilings. And I cut each of the boards in a row uh, to eight feet tall. Okay, now it's time to clean and prep everything. Take that furniture piece and be sure to clean it with clean slate. It's the only thing that will get rid of the wax and any grease or grime that's been on there for years and years. And then take those old barn wood boards, doors, uh, sand off any excess uh, paint flakes and be sure to wear an N95 mask and then seal it with matte sealer. Okay, my favorite part of all of this, of course, is the paint. This is one of my favorite colors by Amy Howard at Home in her One Step Paint. You'll go ahead and apply it with a microfiber brush and then um, let it dry. I do two coats and I sand gently between each coat. Now you can also seal this with a wax or a matte sealer if you want to, but it is also self-sealing, so it's totally up to you. Okay, now it's time to build the structure. So what I did is I took some two by fours and built a giant box with cross beams in the places that I was going to screw something in from the front. And I used these recessed um, angled screw holes using a Craig tool, link is in the description. And that uh, helps me hide the screws and provide some strength to the structure. Next, once that was done, I took 
the barn wood and I used my impact driver and screwed in the boards, just like you see here. Okay, now it's time to adhere the bed footboard to the sides of the hall tree. And what I did is I took a screwdriver and a drill and drilled some holes and then secured it with some uh, construction screws. And you can see that um, here on the back side uh, that I secured it with three uh, screws at this point. And then you will want to um, build uh, some strength and structure to the, the bench part. And I took some two by fours, again, with those recessed screw holes and secured it horizontally on the um, strongest part of the bed. Then I took remaining barn wood and I cut it to uh, fit the uh, cutouts where the bed is and then again I tacked it in place with some screws although you could use some nails here as well and then I created an apron front with the remaining wood. Okay now for the shelf I got a four foot by 12 by half an inch common board at Home Depot, uh, sanded it down so it was nice and smooth. And then I took my paint again and um, put on two coats of the, the green blue color here for my shelf. Then I found these great corbels at Amy Howard at Home. And I wanted to create a shabby chic, chippy look, so I first stained it with her gel stain, and that creates a beautiful uh, wood look underneath that's going to poke through. So cover that with the gel strain and let it dry for about an hour. Then you're gonna mix up some cracked gesso, and this is going to give it some fissure cracks and some chipping, and you'll want to uh, follow the directions on the bag, but mix it up. And then I applied uh, two coats. So I applied one coat first, let that dry, and then put a second coat on, and then again, let that dry. Next, milk paint. Now, I generally don't suggest doing a darker color and then a lighter color, but I wanted a little bit of this green to pop through. And again, it will dry down to a matte, much lighter color. Then I took my Strasbourg white and mixed it up and applied one coat, let it dry, applied a second coat and let it dry. And then I took um, Amy Howard's antique glaze and distressed it using a wet distress technique. Okay, thanks guys for watching till the end. Um, but before we get to the big reveal, I just wanna cover a couple quick things. Um, first, if you didn't know already, a list to all of the supplies that you will need for a tutorial like this are in the description below. So be sure to check that out. I've also included a link so that you can find your local salvage yard, just in case you don't have any 100 year old wood uh, hanging around your house. Um, and be sure to check out my YouTube channel. I've got a basics playlist for all of your basic furniture painting needs. And I have a furniture flip uh, playlist as well. And lots of fabulous shabby chic French farmhouse and regular old farmhouse tutorials. So be sure to give it a like and let's see the big reveal. Okay, here she is. I hope you like it. Um, as you can see here, and I have some, <laughs> some things hung up and uh, more to come, of course, but uh, the target finds that I mentioned before are those fabulous baskets up above, 10 bucks each. So I will leave a link to that in the description below. And then I put our family's initials on each of their respective baskets. Um, those are the corbels that I made in the last step. You can see how the distressing brought out the beautiful stained uh, surface underneath and the crack gesso gave it those fissure cracks and just added a great shabby chic element. Then I got some hardware at Hobby Lobby. Of course, you can get it anyway where, but I like theirs. And um, there, of course, is the second corbel. 
and um, the rest is self-explanatory, so enjoy. And as always, if you have any questions, leave them below or feel free to reach out to me at revivebyheidi at gmail.com. Okay.